Hi everyone, James here. Welcome to another video. Uh, this is going to be um, another video about uh, album jackets, album covers. It's just coming off the back of a video that I've just made and uh, uploaded about um, gatefold album covers and a few people have responded and it's just got me thinking about album covers and how much I'd like to do uh, you know, a video dedicated just to one band and one set of album covers. Just going to go through each of them and talk about them a little bit, you know, what they mean to me and what I think of them as covers. Just one thing um, as well, I'm, I'm using mostly my um, OGs of my Queen albums from back in the day, so there are a few of these covers are not in the best condition, so I, I apologise for that. So Queen always had a very strong visual style, you know, I mean, they were kind of, from the start, they were not just a kind of musical phenomenon, but, uh, you know, a visual one too. Freddie Mercury was a visual artist and, you know, right from the word go, there was something very stylish about their covers and you got the feeling that they went to, uh, you know, a fair deal of uh, trouble to get it just right. Now, this this first cover, obviously, it's kind of far from the best cover they ever did, but it is quite amazing how, even though it was very early in their career, uh, they still seem to have this incredible awareness of their own, I suppose, you know, their own potential for superstardom. You have Freddie there caught in this uh, very strong spotlight, shining down. It's just a very stylish, a fairly kind of timeless image, really, which um, almost predicts what's to come. You know, I mean, they weren't famous at all at this point, so that's a very interesting cover. The back cover is, is a bit of a mess, unfortunately. It's just a kind of collage of uh, photographs of the boys looking very young and uh, not <laughs> not very famous at all. There's Freddie eating some grapes there. So yeah, the back cover is uh, is kind of not as impressive, but the front cover, I always I always loved that cover. I used to look at it in shops when I was a kid and kind of hanker after it. You can see there's a big crease here. That's where I, I crammed this record into my school bag when I was a kid and uh, yeah, well, you shouldn't do that, should you? So that's the first album. Now the second album contains possibly the most iconic image of Queen. Now this. This was not the photo session, or this was not the film session where they did Bohemian Rhapsody. That was about maybe two years later. Bohemian Rhapsody uh, consciously set out to recreate this photograph, which had been taken by the famous uh, rock photographer uh, Mick Rock, who was a friend of the band, I think, or at least he was an associate of theirs. And it was his idea to do the cover, and the band themselves were not too keen on it because I think they thought it was a bit too um, self-important. Yeah. The image was based on an old Hollywood picture. I think it's um, Marlene Dietrich. I can't pronounce her name very well, but there's a famous photograph of her, which I might cut in, uh, which gave Freddie the idea for his pose there. And this is a nice, shiny um, album cover. I think the reissues are matte. This is an original British press, and it has rather intriguing gatefold it kind of opens up and then you get the white shot of the guys on the inside and again when you consider that the band were not famous really at this point they were just four four lads just you know trying to make it and they had this idea for this band and just the idea of the of the black and the white it's just so iconic you know and the and the and in fact you can see that they're kind of wearing period dress there so and you can see that freddie's got a big uh, fluffy white um Thing around his neck, I don't know what it is, it's a fur or something. And Brian is wearing kind of Regency clothes almost. Um, but the stylishness of that cover is just really something else, I think. It's just one of the great uh, iconic band shots of all time. So that was Mick Rock. And now, when they came to do the Sheer Heart Attack cover, Mick Rock again was the photographer and he wanted something completely different. And I think he and Freddie worked closely on the idea for this cover, and the idea was to have the band all looking as if they're kind of hot and sweaty and what they did was they covered themselves in Vaseline and then Mick Rock um, hosed them down with a hose pipe so the water droplets stuck to their faces and then they all just lay on the carpet and he took a photograph from above so um, again it's just an incredibly distinctive picture I and mean, I used to look at that in record shops back in the day and I just used to be so fascinated I used to wonder why you know why is Roger Taylor upside down and, uh, and people have commented on just how cool he looks. You think he's got the medallion, he's got the, the bare chest and the long hair flowing out. And um, what used to fascinate me when I was a kid, I used to love 
the black nail varnish on Freddie's hands. The whole thing was just so sort of glamorous and mysterious and uh, Queen were not really into being photographed looking like normal guys down the bus stop. They were into creating a visual image for themselves which was, uh, which was going to complement the music and make them appear to be very enigmatic. But the stroke of genius about this cover is that the back apparently duplicates the front except uh, you have these fake knife slashes down there which is just such a clever and simple idea uh, it just kind of plays with that idea of having the same picture on the back and the front but there's a fairly radical change to the back you have this maniac has come along and kind of slashed it I love that I also love the big kind of block red letters as well very chunky looking it's just it's just a brilliant cover I think okay so then we move on to a couple of albums where I think I'm right in saying that these were designed by Freddie Mercury. Uh, Freddie came up with this design and I think it was it was based on all their star signs, their astrological signs. So now I'm not going to go kind of into it but I can see a lion there so I assume that uh, I assume that Leo was involved somewhere. So this is Night at the Opera and it's just that got that great kind of white stark simplicity with this very bright and colourful image on the front which is duplicated on the record label as well. On the back you have these wonderful medieval pictures of people with swords through their heads or just kind of strange uh, medieval looking pictures. And then the inside, not a particularly interesting goat fold but you have the lyrics and the band shot down here and actually it's worth just showing you the uh, the insert for this one because it's a rather fine insert you have some really good band shots which again may well have been uh, Mick Rock again and then on the back you have the wonderful stage shot of them with the dry ice so you know a very carefully contrived set of images and designs there and then the stroke of genius I can't think of another example of this I mean there may well be another example but the idea of an album having a twin in its successor and you have Day at the Races is a very similar idea but it's actually it's black now and the design I'm not sure I don't think the design is exactly the same the design is very similar but certainly not exactly the same the bird is in a different position and there's some flames in that one and that one is a crab, crab being um, cancer, the astrological sign. I'm not very up on my astrological signs, I'm afraid. So yeah, a very similar design on the back. This time, rather than the medieval faces, you have the uh, uh, these figures down here, the crab and the lion. And then inside, again, a very similar idea. You have the lyrics, and then you have this uh, band shot there. Or just standing up at his drum playing the tambourine they were probably playing the song 39 at that point I love the fact that John Deacon's wearing his dungarees so yeah and then the inside of this one is not quite as good it's just blank on that side but it does have a rather fetching shot of the boys on the inside cover looking rather pale so that's day at the races we move on to the monster album cover this is news of the world and this actually is uh, the repress from a few years ago it opens out again let me get this right it opens out like this so this is uh this was painted by uh, an author uh, a science fiction artist called frank kelly freeze and it was to illustrate uh, a story in a sci-fi magazine and I'll flash up the picture, the, uh, the, uh, the original picture, so you can see it. And it was Roger Taylor who saw the picture, and uh, they, uh, they thought it would be a good design for the cover, so they sort of hit on the idea of him re redoing the cover and having the, rather than the single man in the robot's hand, having the band there. Something I've always liked is that John Deacon is wearing his dungarees from the previous album cover, which, uh, from the inserted date of the races, which I thought was quite a nice touch. And then the inside um, contains the horrendous shot of the monster smashing his way inside this strange underground base and everybody running away. 
that shot was used on the billboards to advertise the tour at the time. So uh, just one of the true kind of iconic covers, I think, from the 1970s. And it was such a different cover concept from what had been you know, the previous two albums. And fairly appropriately, I suppose, because this album was a kind of breakaway in style. So there we have um, News of the World. I used to lust after this album cover, as did most kids in, in, uh, in the UK back in the 1970s. You know, you'd see it in the shops and you would just want it. I remember that quite distinctly. One thing I always thought made no sense, that you've got Roger Taylor is kind of falling there, but his hair is, is not kind of... I mean, really, if he's falling, then his hair... you think his hair would be doing something else. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Then you've possibly got maybe the weakest album design in their catalogue. This is Jazz, which is a far less distinctive uh, image than is used on News of the World. It's a gatefold again. Now I read somewhere that the original concept for this cover, they were going to have the, the naked girls on the bicycles on the cover, but then that ended up being a poster instead. That would have certainly have been interesting. So a fairly ordinary cover that I think it's not one of Queen's best but it does have a rather a nice um, rather a nice gatefold that's Queen in their studio now where is that studio is it Montserrat uh, Montreux Switzerland maybe mountain super bear studios I don't know but anyway it just gives you a sense of uh, how successful they were at this point that they were able to record in such a you know big environment and I've, you know, I've always loved that shot, but uh, yeah, not my not my favourite cover overall. Okay, next we have the game. This is the remaster, an incredibly shiny cover, pretty much a mirror. <laughs> Again, this this always looked good in uh, in shots back in the day. Not a gatefold. I always thought it was a shame that this was not a gatefold album because it could easily have been. There's some rather nice shots of the boys. On the uh, on the inner, which I always thought would have made a fantastic gatefold. And this is the first time we saw Freddie with his moustache. I always used to be very interested in the fact that this guy is is pink or red, with Roger and John there. So this was a very distinctive album cover, very kind of stylish. And I've got a feeling that 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 photo was uh, was taken from the the video of Crazy Little Thing Called Love, because you've got. Um, Freddie there in his in his leathers and his kind of you know greaser hair, so yeah, non non more shiny. Okay, so just a quick look at Flash Gordon, which is uh, a cover that always cheers me up to look at it. It's just so kind of yellow and beautiful, and you know it's got that great picture of Flash on the back, jumping up just after he's vanquished um, Ming the Merciless. And then inside you have this rather snazzy, it's all starting to look a little bit more 80s now, isn't it? It's kind of lost that uh, 1970s stylishness and it's kind of starting to get that slightly tacky looking uh, 80s <laughs> feel. But uh, still good, you know, good fun. So there's Flash Gordon. Then we move on to Hot Space, which again was a, was a cover at the time which you saw everywhere, you know, in shops and... It was um, a complete departure, really. It was, um, I'm not sure if I've got any information as to who did this. I looked it up and I couldn't find any information, really, as to who did it. And I don't really know what the style of the art is. But it, it was a complete departure. It was very bright. It was kind of day glow. The, the pictures of Queen very sort of, I mean, I mean, they're not caricatures, but they're very minimal. And um, on the inside you have, lyrics on one side but then you have the band again and I used to be very interested to see how they all I think they all change colour apart from Roger Roger is green down here and he, he stays green there whereas everybody else has changed colour Brian is blue, Freddie is yellow and John is red whereas here you can see Freddie is red, John is blue and Brian is and, uh, and Brian is yellow but um, hey I had endless hours to fixate over these things when I was a kid I had this album for Christmas, I think, in 1983, and um, I used to sit staring at that cover. I just thought it was very, 
uh, well, stylish. I wouldn't have known that word back then, but it was it was an intriguing cover. It was eye catching. It was different. It was it was interesting. It was fun. Okay, so now we're moving on to um, a cover that I do have some information. Now this is my very battered copy of the work. You can see here. There's some tape here. I could do with getting a uh, a repress of this because it's a very very stylish and beautiful photograph. And I think I'm right in saying, okay, it was. The photograph was taken by George Hurrell, who did the cover for, if you know the album Press to Play by Paul McCartney, which is also a black and white shot, and I think he used the same camera both times. It was an old Hollywood camera that they used to take photographs of film stars, I think, you know, back in the 1940s. And, um, you know, I mean, given that the album, this is 1980, whatever it is, three, you know, it could have been a lot more tacky than that, uh, but it's actually very, very stylish with the black and white and the shadows. It's a shame about John Deacon's hair, but the rest of them um, kind of escape censure, really. They all look reasonable, don't they? And then on the back, you get these kind of cogs and some nice colour photographs of the boys. Again, John Deacon is rather embarrassing himself there in a kind of brown body warmer thing and a, and a hat, I don't know. A nice cover and um, maybe not the most exciting cover in the world but uh, a tasteful shot I mean that's the word isn't it it's tasteful so by complete contrast the next album just went completely overboard again back to the kind of colorful quite kind of tacky I've always thought I've always liked this cover but it's you know if you compare it to I mean there's no comparison is there if you go back to you know if you go back to this one and then you fast forward 10 years or so and then you get to this it's there's a fair there's a fair contrast there and you can see that we're now well really firmly into the 1980s we're in 1986 in fact but it's you know it's a gatefold at least so you get all this fun stuff happening on the back i do remember thinking at the time this was a definite departure for queen you know queen were never really associated with cartoony fun kind of things it tended to be more kind of you know regal and uh, formal I suppose but this kind of shows shows them in full caricature mode which I thought was rather fun really and uh, yeah just a nice fun album cover one that always it kind of always cheers me up to look at it you know. then we move on to the miracle now this was Quantel Paintbox, which was a kind of newish technique back in the late 80s, which allowed you to blur the faces together. And the reason they did that was this is the first Queen album where they credited all the songs just to Queen, rather than having them done by individual writers. They decided finally after, you know, years and years of doing individual tracks, individually credited, that they were going to mix everything up and just credit the band. So it's quite a clever visual metaphor for that, them kind of, you know, melding coming together and you know Queen were, Queen were one of the most kind of tight bands of the 70s and 80s you know they always they, they stayed the same line up and they they kept together even though they had these kind of fearsome fights and disputes with each other so I always thought that was quite a nice cover that used to freak me out a little bit it's quite good fun going through and trying to identify whose eye belongs to who but you've got that and then it's quite a nice shot of them on the inside against the blue backdrop John Deacon's looking far less embarrassing now, and Freddie is starting to look somewhat thin and pale, but um, at the time when this album came out, nobody really knew for certain why that was, but uh, yeah, a nice cover. Sort of reminds me a little bit of the Cloud Nine album cover by George Harrison, which came out only maybe a couple of years before. Got the clouds and the blue turquoise sky. And then finally, I'm afraid, again, my copy is, is in pretty bad shape. There's our price sticker there that's not peeled off properly, so I need to get a nice, decent copy of this. Now, I think the reissue of this has come out as a gatefold, so I will definitely want to be getting it. Now, this um, this picture, it was done by Jean-Jacques Jean -Jacques or J.J. Grandville. Uh, he was a French caricaturist who lived 1803 to 1847. He did, um, you know, political pamphlets and he kind of illustrated books. I think he specialised in making um, figures of 
I think it was hu human bodies but with animal heads. Uh, but this is a detail from one of his one of his pictures, and it's it's rather nice, really. You have the little guy there standing on the world, and he's juggling what look to be planets. Although there is a banana hanging around there for some reason. And then on the back, you have this rather strange image of is it ears, and then a big tuba thing there. And I've always loved these pictures on the inside, these pictures of the band done in the style of this of this particular artist. I always thought they were quite nice. And then you just got a band shot. And it was discreetly done, I think, so you really couldn't tell how uh, poorly Freddie was looking at this point. So, yeah, I'm not going to do Made in Heaven for the simple reason that I don't own it. But it's uh, that's got rather a nice cover as well. I think it's a picture of, there's a, isn't there a statue of Freddy? Or the band is standing looking over a kind of misty water, an expanse of water. I think, really, they didn't really drop a clanger. I think Jazz maybe is the only one which is a bit weaker. I think all, all of the album jackets have something to recommend them. And... Um, you know, taken as a whole, I think it's a really distinctive and good body of work, which I always enjoy. I always enjoy flicking through these records, even if I don't actually play the albums, I actually enjoy looking at the artwork. So yeah, I just thought that this would be quite a fun thing to do, just to go through um, all all the album covers of just one particular band and uh, just look at each one in turn. So uh, if this video goes down well, I might do it again with, uh, with another band at some point. So uh, there we go, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.